Hey, I think I'm back. Uh, I think I'm back on. Um, hey, uh, had a hitch in my get along, as my grandmother used to say. Let's try coming back on. Hey, he's back. <laughs> I see a Roo a, a, a with a, a computer cable wrapped around his neck. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think that was the problem. We have contact. Uh, Mission Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, that'd be a good uh, good painting, wouldn't it? Maybe I just paint a rooster that's all t tangled up in computer problems. So, uh, John, I'll I'll do it for you. Hey, there you are. Thank you, folks, for jumping back on. Um, I appreciate it. Glad you're back with me. Hey guys, thanks for jumping back on. Uh, you know what? Sometimes it just happens. Third, fourth, I'll, I'll delete a bunch of those other pages when I get back to my uh, page today. Um, had a glitch in, uh, looks like glitch in computer maybe. And so I'm not going to blame it on the company software that runs this the live stream. I think it was probably my computer who just said we quit for a while. And so that's what happens when, uh, when it does. So you know what? You just kind of... Uh, I told you I was flying without a net this morning. That was what my original note said. Little did I know I was being so uh, uh, so much of a prophet there. Okay, so. John asked for this painting, so I'm just going to do it. Woohoo! We're back. Hey, glad y'all are here. So uh, I don't know where I went away to, but I went away to somewhere pretty fast. So thank you for, uh, here's what happens. Sometimes the, the wheels just come off of the wagon and you have to stop and do a little maintenance. Uh, hey, I had no idea. I just restarted everything. Unplugged it. I'll plug, well, I didn't unplug everything, but I restarted from uh, from the, the ground up. So that seemed to, uh, to put a little bit of... Uh, All right, so sometimes you just need to do a quick sketch like this. Kind of going there anyway. So John Robert Small said, hey, I think it shows should show Rue having some cables or computers wrapped around him. You know, just kind of stepped in it this morning. Maybe uh, wandering in here last night and throwing stuff down on the desk. No, it's, uh, that's not what happened. It's just sometimes technology does this. Hey, it's a uh, civilization it was Louis L'Amour. I think it was Louis L'Amour who said, um, let me go back to this page one second here. Let's see if we get this over a little bit. It was Louis L'Amour who said, Civiliz be prepared to live like the primitive man. Civilization is a flimsy cloak. I, I'm misquoting Bendigo Shafter, who was one of the characters in that book, but, but that's kind of where he was headed with the whole deal. He was going like, hey, you know what? We better know when, when the gas company runs out of gas and when the electricity is down, we better know how to build a fire and have a good enamel pot somewhere to put the hot water in on the fireplace. If you don't have a fireplace, then you better know how to build a fire in your backyard and heat up some water for some tea. Like, what's going to happen if we can't make tea? Okay. So there we go. Hey, so I'm back to you. It is what it is, folks. It just happens. So uh, I can apologize all day long, but um, you know what? We're all at the mercy sometimes of a piece of technology. It's crazy, isn't it, how our technology has changed in my lifetime? Who would have dreamed that we would be doing this and other people would be seeing it online? Or you're going like, well, no, we're not really seeing it. I didn't see it. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. So here's a, and this is great paper, by the way. I'm back to my Kilimanjaro paper. I'm painting some. Uh, so uh, we're just rolling on through here. So thanks for jumping back in so quickly with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for liking the show, even when it doesn't work correctly. <laughs> um, 
Hey, I threw a little bit of new red in here this week. Uh, made my trip to Trader uh, Trader Joe's. Yeah, I go to Trader Joe's about every day, or one of us does. Carol was there yesterday, I'm sure. Um, she's baking something right now. And uh, went to Cheap Joe's this week, and I bought a new red. I usually use uh, Red Hot Mama or Joe's Red, and I picked up some Cadmium Red Medium. So uh, there's a lot of M's and, and UM's in this. Uh, so it's Cad Red. Uh, it's medium red. Some people don't like cad colors because they have metal in them. And so they're sensitive to that. Some of the new colors do not have metal and they figured out how to do it that way. But then again, I, people say, well, I can't paint with that because it has metal in it. And I go, uh, you know, I'm a blacksmith and I just, I touch metal all the time. And so I know it's a different kind of alloy or steel, but you know, it is what it is. And so, um, and I'm not trying to paint my hands. So it's not like I'm having my nails done every week. Hey, this has a lot of, uh, you notice that? You see a lot of uh, kind of a yellowy light gray in this. I, I punched this with a little bit of that uh, gray when I mixed the leg color here. Uh, sometimes I don't like the legs of my ruse to be too pumpkin orange. I like a little bit down here along the bottom. And then just um, notice I'm not staying in the lines. That was one of the little videos I showed you this morning. A lot of Joes and yes, um, my husband was a huge fan of Louis L'Amour. Yeah, weren't we all, man? Louis, uh, I read a lot of Louis' books. Uh, back when we were in our camping world, uh, when we did a lot of camp work, uh, one of the first jobs that you have when you come to camp is like, hey, you are you're, you're uh, you look like you're not a guy. Well, there's horses down there. Go take care of them. And so I had grown up wanting to be a cowboy uh, <laughs> until real cowboys come along and you go, you know, I know nothing. Because you people who are real cowboys, you're, you're a tough breed, okay? I'm telling you, you, um, you know, as Abe Lincoln said, I didn't waste my time watching TV. No, I did something more fun. I read, I painted, I, I did something creative. I wrote stories. Um, I don't know what he said. I finished his quote for him. I wasn't real sure what he said after he said that first part. He didn't really say it, you know, because he wouldn't have known about television. Just like we wouldn't have known about streaming on the internet um, a few years ago. Uh, we knew about television. Hey, here's something. When you get talking and you don't know what you're doing, try putting the right end of your brush in the water. It it paints a whole lot better. But but just because I'm a wise guy, I'm going to paint with the back end just to show you that I can. There we go. I'm just going to scratch it down through there like that. <laughs> And so they'll go, oh my gosh, the guy turned his brush around and painted with the backside of it. It's because he's a show out. But actually, that worked pretty well. You know, I do that with my pens quite often. I'll drag my pens through there and let a little ink and color mix. And it just gives a great look to the painting sometimes. I mean, can you see what that's doing? Look at this. I think that's a pretty decent focus. Let me see if it'll I'll have to focus right there. After this morning, I'm just going to jump around here until I get the daggum thing straightened out, okay? So I'm painting with a bamboo brush. It's a number one bamboo, and it's supposed to have a little ring on the back of it like this, like a little cap and a, a loop. I don't know. This one probably, the glue failed somewhere along the line. So I was talking and just dumping my brush in there, and I went to paint and went, oh, the end's gone off my brush, and I realized I turned it around in my hand, so it doesn't really matter. Um... Okay, so so I just uh, this is this is how you regroup. This is how you, you need a little computer gray here. There it is, right there. There's my there's my Mac gray. I need a little table color. We'll do that in just a little uh, bit of this sienna brown. It's kind of dark. It looks a little walnutly. I like walnut. Uh, this is an oak table, but it's stained walnut. Someday I'm going to strip this table down just and, and go back with brie wax. If you don't know what brie wax is. If, if you've ever done any antique furniture restoration or anything like that, Bri, Bri Wack is, Bri Rex, Bri's, Bri Wax is Brewax. Brewax. B-R-I. It's got an X in there. Um, good stuff. It's not cheap, but man, does it add life and love to your furniture. How did I get into that, to your furniture? Like you guys really want to know. You know, there's a good word out there. Um, it's called Maven. Um, I told Pat Brooks the other day, and, and I hope I told her this is a compliment. I hope she uh, looked up that word. Actually, she probably knew this word in her vocabulary of uh, um, maven. Maven is a great word. 
And so you don't want to be a know-it-all, but being a maven is not a know-it-all. It's just someone who has um, not expertise necessarily, but information in lots of areas. You know, if you were going to buy a computer today and you call my son, he would not say, oh, you have to have this because this is the greatest computer ever made. He would say, "Um, tell me what you're going to use it for. Oh, then you might want this, this, or this. And they'd go, how, how would you know that? And he's, he's a maven. Um, so sometimes in a storytelling world, you just tend to have a little information stored up there. And it really kind of makes it fun when people want to know. Because one of the rules that I have in in my whole Roodoodle thing is withhold nothing. And so, um, you know, it's not like I discovered watercolor painting. I, in fact, I, I, I'm standing on the shoulders of, I'm not even standing, I'm I'm way off to the side of just being next to people who've painted brilliantly for years and who have natural gifts and ability. I didn't start out knowing how to sketch. I still don't sketch well. I started out by just saying, I'm going to stay at it. I'm going to stay behind the mule until I develop something that I like and, and my own vision. Now, we'll talk about that in the class, too. You can tell I'm building up to the class a little bit because it's been exciting. I wasn't going to do them. You guys wanted to start them. And so um, um, it's my fault. I'm not blaming it on you. It's been fun, though. And so um, some of you have found the Flowdesk link on my website because I saw 20, 25, or 20 or 25 uh, subscriptions going yesterday, that'll get you on the Roodoodles emailing list. I don't send out a lot of email stuff. I don't m- do a lot of merch. I do a cup sometimes and some daily Roodoodles. But my point is the classes, it's a good way for you to get a, a what's in here coming to you. So if you want to go back to when we're done with the show today, you'll see a link down there and I'll repost it. It's a link that says Flowdesk on it, F-L-O. You can go there it's a very secure link. You can put in your email address. I can't sign you up. You have to sign up for yourself. And then you'll be getting probably tomorrow. It could be tomorrow. It'll be Thursday at the latest. You're going to get an email that's going to say, here's when the class is. Here's what the class is. Here's where you can go to register for the class. It's going to be all those things that you need. Okay. So as you can see, I'm painting this little rooster who's kind of hidden there by my head. Let me get my head out of the way just a little bit more here. There he is right there. Um, so this is this is me at the desk here this morning, a, a few minutes ago when I was doing my scramble. And uh, was I going to paint this this morning? No. I didn't know what I was going to paint, but um, you know what? That got solved for me when the computer crashed and the internet went down and the wheels fell off of the wobbly shaft and the ziz pin fell out of the tongue. And so there you have it. That's what happens on the farm. You know, those of you who understand the farm world. So... So now I haven't drawn this next thing that I'm going to draw. I haven't drawn in a long, long time. So here's where that little flyer piece of paper will come in real handy. Let me show you. I'm going to just pull one out right here. Look at this. Um, so I haven't drawn. It'd be easy for me to draw a blacksmith hammer. I could draw it like this and a little cutout. And then it has a peen end on it like that. And maybe and a little facet face comes down like so. And then the handle comes down. That That's a good hammer. Or I could draw a machinist hammer which is more like a ball peen hammer. And so why do I know all these hammers? Because I'm probably the only guy that's online with you this morning <laughs> that has a box of hammers. You know, you ever heard that old saying, that boy is dumb as a box of hammers? Um, I have a box of hammers. I probably have, I used to have about 50, 50 something hammers. Because I'm a blacksmith, you, you kind of collect hammers. I even have, I even bought, Carol two hammers for Christmas because of jewelry classes and some of the stuff she's doing. So, all right, so I'm not happy with this little ball peen yet. So I like a little more meat in the in it, like here and then here. And then I like the peen a little sharper. There it is right there. Okay, so that's a little ball peen hammer. All right, so I'm going to go right in here. I think that's the one I'm going to do. I think I'm going to just do a little ball peen hammer. If uh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with the, uh, I'm going to really be gutsy here and just do it with this fountain pen. Here it is right here. Okay, all that for that little thing of a pen. What was I thinking? You know, and then I'm going to just go get a little bit of brown, maybe a little rusty brown for the handle here like this. And then I'm just going to let that pen itself, uh, the fountain pen, be the color for the hammer. 
and put a little rust. It's a rusty hammer. Let me see. Oh, you know what? I think I had one over here on my desk I could have just pulled out and shown you. <laughs> you know, it's it's been one of those mornings. I'm going to see if it's still over here. Just hold on for a second. Just wait a minute. Where's my hammer? I could have gone and got that hammer right there. Forgot I had that. I bought this at an antique store probably a year ago for like $15. <laughs> oh, it's a great hammer. Why does it stay in my office desk drawer? Maybe for exactly what I needed this morning. Hey, I didn't plan this. I just thought of this. That's funny. That thing weighs about three pounds. I love it. All right. So this, uh, according to that, if I'd have picked up the real hammer, I would have put the peen on here just a little bit um, wider and sharper. So there it is right there. And maybe a little more brown in there. Uh, I think you figured out that's the microphone right there. Okay. Mic stand. There's the table. There's all the cables and the wires. Here's all the things. So this is um, this is my approach to uh, handling the technology issue I had this morning. There it is right there. <laughs> so, so it needs a caption, don't you think? Yeah, I, I got to put a caption on this. Let's see. I'm going to rip this page off, by the way. That's on, uh, this is on Kilimanjaro, uh, 100% rag cotton paper. I mean, this is uh, for a cartoon uh, or a routine, as I call them. Uh, just trim this off, and you got lots of places. Even if you had to frame it and get rid of the little 110, it's no big deal. Um, I, think, uh, I think I need to splatter just a little bit. I'll do that after I put a, a title on here. So there's my painting this morning. You can see he's, um, the, the rule in the farm is, right, uh, get a bigger hammer. You know, if something breaks, you go, oh, or, you know, get a bigger hammer. And uh, or if you're trying to fix it, get a bigger hammer. And if it breaks, it needed replacing anyway. That's that's kind of the rule. Um, that's been the rule for <laughs> for how uh, my family's fixed things for years. Um, I think I need a little bit of uh, I need a little bit of smoke coming up out of the computer. That's kind of where it was this morning. It was like, what is going on here? I mean, I can see wheels spinning and things, and then I started thinking, it's awfully quiet in here. Um, music's barely playing. All right, so you can even see his picture on the screen, a little bit of a blue screen. Let me add a little bit of blue right in there. There we go. There's the computer. See, that looks like he's on the screen, and um, he's beating the tar out of it, as we used to say. So there's a couple. Here's, here's a little... Uh, Power block hanging down, another cord unplugged, a wire coming over here. And what am I doing now? I'm just making this all kind of messy. And as John Robert Small said, maybe there's a maybe there's a couple computer wires hanging around the ruse neck. He's like this. He's got uh, some pieces on the floor. So now what I'm doing is I'm just having fun making this a messy detail painting. This would be the light. Let's put a little yellow in there just to give that a little bit of a so you recognize that that's a light. All right, so there, so there we go. Could be a mirror, but that's it. Hammer it out. <laughs> Hammer it out. No, I'm thinking uh, technology. I think this has got a statement on it. All right. Hey, I'm going to leave that for a second. I'm going to leave that for a second till it just dries a little bit more. I'm going to paint something else. I'm going to come back and put a, a little reveal caption on here that's going through my mind right now it's just how my brain works okay and you're going did he just say how his brain works <laughs> that's like red skeleton saying two seagulls gertrude hickler <laughs> so hey there's one of those new cars over there the mercedes he goes i know i already spotted it you gotta love uh you gotta love red skeleton huh you gotta love red skeleton wow 
Okay, so I had fun yesterday painting on this giant piece of paper that I showed some of you. Oh my gosh, it's 11 by 15. And don't worry, Margie, Margie the Splatter Queen, Margie Duval, I'm coming back to you. See, Sandy, I like technology or bust, but that that just seems uh, okay. So no, so don't take this personally, but I'm saying it to you personally. That just seems a little like that's what most people would put. And I am an artist who thinks like an artist and says, I want to write a caption that no one else was thinking about. So now you're into Rue's world, okay? So, so see, that's like, um, and I love that, something or bust, because that means that's been what it was since the 49ers went out west to dig for gold. They said, you know, gold or bust, or, you know, gold strike or bust, or diamonds or bust, or California or bust. So that's been around for a while. And so everybody gets it. It's like, why did the chicken cross the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, see, I stopped there because you do know. But for me, that would be, that would be this answer. But is there three other layers that I could add to that that would give humor a chance? And this is what I'll talk about in the class, and I do it every time we get into captions. People say, why do you write on your art? And I say, because I'm a poor artist. <laughs> and I say, it's, no, it really, sometimes it's because I want people to go like this. Watch my hand. I want people to go down like this. And they're going like, oh, I know what he's doing. 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 I didn't see that coming. Okay. Hey, you want to see a great holiday movie? Would you like to see a good holiday movie? Um, it's uh, it's Rob Lowe. I think it is it Rob Lowe. It's, it's, uh, and her name may be Catherine. I don't even know the actors. I'm so sorry. It's called Holiday in the Wild. It's just a little romantic comedy, but it's a good story about elephants in Africa. Um, and it's called Holiday in the Wild. And there's two times that he uses that line. I, I didn't, well, I didn't see that coming. Oh, I didn't see that coming. I really didn't see that coming. Uh, it's a cute movie. In fact, it's cute enough to show to the family and grandkids. It's called Holiday in the Wild. It's probably on Netflix, maybe. Um, if you have Netflix, um, and look, pe people, I get comments from people all the time about Netflix, Netflix and Prime and uh, Facebook. Gosh, Facebook, they say, just does some really terrible stuff. And I'm going like, yeah, but we're doing good stuff on it right now. You know, just cho choose the parts you want and be selective and just turn off the rest of it. You know, you don't, Abe Lincoln didn't waste his time watching TV, okay? He said, hey, there's more to do than, than uh play a video game. So that's what I you would tell my kids all the time. So, hey, this is a big old piece of paper. And because it's, uh, do I have smaller paper? Yes. Um, but I wanted a, I wanted a, a, another piece here. Look at this. Let's see if I can cut this piece of paper on here. I can't keep it and cut it on there. So here we go. I'm just going to whack a piece of it right across here like this, about three inches like that. Okay. And then maybe I'll just take this piece and cut it almost in half. And I'm not even measuring it. I'm just clear. Let's see how close I got. I think I missed by about six to quarter of an inch. Yeah, I did. Good. I like the bigger piece. All right. So this is uh, this is Fabriano paper. It is 25% uh, cotton, but has a wonderful, wonderful tooth. And so I kind of like it. And uh, what time is it? Ten till. So don't, um, when you hang with elephants, take a really big hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big, big hammer. But if you haven't seen the movie, watch the movie. It's called Holiday in the Wild. And so sometimes we just need inner art. And so, uh, uh, so uh, Sandy, I, I wasn't picking on you. Uh, so thank you for hearing me out. I see your response there. So sometimes a, a comment prompts me. And so it's not an attack. It's just like, oh, wow, that's good. But have you thought of this? So I'm going to take a turn with you as soon as this dries a little bit so I can put my hand on it. I'm not just going to put the caption down here. I'm going to write all the way around this thing like this. I just am going to put so somebody would see this in a frame and they would walk up and they'd go, oh, wow. Because, you know, you hear this, you hear a comment all the time. You know what you hear? I hate technology. I hate technology. But then what you hated about it a few minutes ago was that it wasn't working. And me too. What I love about it is when it comes together and it builds a story and it connects people. Don't you love that about technology? My friend, Ash, just popped up this morning. Ash and I have been working on technology since back in the spring. He came and spent several days with me. And 
Ash is a traveler. Um, um, he's a He's a storyteller. He's a he's an itinerant preacher. He's a, a hillbilly hat man. The point is, he goes and he tells stories, and he's raised a lot of money for Young Life over the years as a humorist in speaking and also just heartfelt messages. But nobody's going anywhere. You can't go do banquets today. So what Ash has been doing is, is he's putting banquets together on video or messages for people. What am I doing here? I'm sitting in my office since March, which I've turned into a a, a nightmare of cables and cords and messed up tables. And I'm bringing you some art that you might tie into. So the point is, I want to push you, push you, push you, push you. I want you to go over the edge just a little bit and go, that's what the class is about. Think like an artist. My wife thinks like an artist in the kitchen. When she does appetizers, you think, oh, I'm going to bring in a little plate with this and this. We don't have little plates. We we were in Texas, and she bought a, an olive board that's uh, about five feet long and talked them into letting her bring it onto the plane and carried it in. The other night, she had cheese and and um, and little pieces of pepperoni on it and fruit and mustards and just uh, uh, it goes on and on and on and different three different types of crackers and you and you carry it over to the table like this and you're going like oh my gosh this this is socially distanced. Um, charcuterie board here. You can serve people from both ends of this thing and they'll be six feet apart almost. So she just thinks outside the edge, outside the, over the edge. And so, uh, that's, that's a painting like this that, um, that, that I love doing sometimes just on little, uh, and I did this in the warm up this morning. Okay. Um, Let's see. What kind of cutter do you have, Rue? I don't know. Somebody said that Pat probably knows because I don't. What did I do with it? Here, I threw it down here. I think it's a Westcott, so it's a cheap brand. I probably just picked it up at uh, Office Depot or somewhere. It's kind of a cool little thing because I don't have to do a big chop cutter. And uh, here it is right here. So if you ask, there it is. It's, it's called a Westcott, but uh, uh, several people make these. Fiskers makes them. Westcott makes them. Uh, who, who knows? Everybody but the uh, Kohler, which they make toilets, I think. So for me, it's I only use, really, this is when I cut my little cards. Um, here's here's three inches right there. Boom. And you just push down on the little green thing and slide it, and it's got a little razor underneath. It's kind of fun. So so there's, I just cut that piece of paper I was going to use. What's the matter with me? <laughs> I'll take cut another one there. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's been one of those days. Hey, I'm not painting tomorrow, by the way. I'm going to have to uh, hit the road. I've got to travel a little bit. I'll Hopefully, we get back safely on Thursday. Uh, I'll tell you the story of where we've been and show you why I had to travel. Carol and I are making a little run down south about three and a half hours from here to pick up something. Um, that uh, she's uh, got me into. Okay, here we go. Get out of the lines is one of the rules rules. Yes, that's exactly right. So here it is. This is my get out of the way, or it's a little closer than that. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I just changed how I'm going to do this painting right then. I just literally flipped it in the opposite direction. What time have I got? I got a little bit of time to finish this up here, maybe. You know, it came on a little late this morning, so I can I can hang out with you a little bit later. I'm here all day today editing in my studio, trying to finish up some work. Um, I'm always trying to finish up some work. Isn't that a great thing, though? Well, I'm blessed. I'll, I'll just tell you that. All right, so a bunch of peeps lined up here, and... Uh, No idea. No idea. 
where this painting was going to go this morning and still don't really. I think I'm going to get there. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Uh, this is kind of fun when you just go, what is he absolutely doing? I don't know. All right, so let me just paint some of this and see here. This I've never done a little painting like this before. Well, I've done something similar, but it just popped in my brain a minute ago when I said something that said, um, quit worrying about staying in the lines and get a little bit on the edge. And so that just went through my brain. And so that's what happens when those comments like that, when you read something, when you're, when you see something, when you see, um, a concept of, of when everybody's, um, it was Tom sign one time, I think who said, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, he wrote, I think a guy named Tom sign wrote a book called wherever two or more are gathered, someone spills milk. Oh my gosh. I just, I just want the book because of the title. In fact, I think I have the book on my shelves in the other room. I just, I just, I just love that, you know, cause you, you, you think, you know, if you're, if you're, if you grew up in a church and you, you read scripture, you would know where, wherever two or more are together, God, God is there in your midst. Okay. That's, that's a great gospel fact. And I love that. I'm, I'm thankful for that today in this political climate we live in, but for Tom sign to say, wherever two or three or more are gathered, someone spills milk, <laughs> you know, it's like every family, you know, it's just what happens. And so he, he's got a concept of how he takes his, sense of humor. And, uh, and this was years ago, that book probably came out in the, in the eighties. I don't even know if it's out there anymore. So, uh, and I don't know if he's alive or well or where, but, um, okay. So what I did there is I took a little bit of Brown and, and contrasting color and I put it in there. Um, and so, um, I, I love what's happening with that. Now I'm taking a little bit of just water on this cleaned out brush and I'm just touching these these grapes down here with a little bit of, uh, and these, look how purple these are. These must be Concord grapes, or if you were from East Tennessee, Concord grapes, because um, that's what, uh, I, I grew up in a little town called Concord. And so, um, all right, I'm finishing quickly here. Got to put the caption on. Can you stay with me for another minute or two? I'll knock this out, and then uh, I'll have a fun little painting here to show you. Where's my brush? The one that I've been using upside down all morning. Let me just go in here with a little bit of this. Let me get a little bit of earth and green. Um, yeah, no, oh, there it is. I've pulled in the wrong green. See, this is kind of a cool green. And I just found it uh, by hanging out in the art store and saying, I think I'm going to try a little different green. I'm always using uh, sap green, which I love for tree leaves and things. But but I like, I like the earth and green too. But I also like to drop a little bit of a different brown in there and just let that sort of fade out a little bit. This, this little leaf green right here needs a leaf. All right. This is, this is how you start from no, sorry. This is how you start from no idea and then create a little idea that, uh, Okay, so there we go. This is going to be a fun painting. And and, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to finish it right now. I'm going to finish the other one before I go. But I'm going to put a caption on this, and I'm going to finish it up. And you can see what's happening here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's six little peeps here. Should probably do one more out here. Maybe I will. Um, and and they're all, they're all working in tandem here to uh, keep this little guy out over the edge. And he's picking up the grapes for them. And so I'm telling you, sometimes in art, it's out here on the edge when you get over the edge and when you run out of the lines and when you loosen up that this is where the real art takes place out here. Okay. This is, this is, there's an old saying, it goes like this. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up way too much space. It's a great line, isn't it? We're living on the edge right now. Everybody is. Everybody's not only edgy, but we're we're living on the edge. You know, the news, all you had to do is listen to a little bit of news last night. And you realize we're on the edge, and then you go, really, really. You know, some of those people and what they do in their daily lives and where they've been and who they're connected to and their political whatever, it has very little to do with me sitting down at this art desk and make, making people smile 
or bringing them in to uh, call them and push them to the edge a little bit to say, I want to be an artist, I want to be a writer, I want to be a speaker, I want to be uh, a, a chef, you want to be a poet, you want to be a potter, you want to be a glassblower, you want to be a blacksmith, you want to be, uh, you want to be a car mechanic. Now's the time to learn it. You want to learn how to work on motorcycles? Go find one online for $75 that doesn't run and bring it home and take it apart. Your, it's, it'll be good for your fingers. I still take things apart at my age. You know, it keeps my fingers nimble, keeps them loose. You see what I'm saying there? That's what I want you to learn. Um, that's what I want you to do. Um, turn off your TV. Uh, turn on, if you're going to watch anything, let technology be your friend a little bit and uh, watch some YouTubes on how to take something apart, put something together. Have you ever fixed a toaster? Unplug it first, okay? Trust me. <laughs> All right, so this is going to have to do with uh, the colors out over the edge. I don't know what yet, but don't you love how this uh, this came together? Look at that. If you're not living on the edge, Chris, you're taking up too much space. All right, I'm going to put a caption on this, and then I'm going to splatter it, Margie, for you, and then I'm going to be done with it. I'll put some detail in it. I'll go back in with a fountain pen. I'll grab probably or a number seven pen, and I'll put a little veining in the legs like this. I'll put some toenails on there. I like doing that on my roosters. I like adding a little touch of feather with this black pen. I just like more of those little wires all tangled around. Um, so here we go. Um, technology. Is that how you spell it? Okay. Um, let's do it with this pen right here. Living Living with technology is like, oh, it's a simile. He's gone in there now. I've started it now. I got to stop it. Living with technology is like living with a a brood hen. You can't live with her. You can't live without her. There it is right there. Living with technology is like living with a brood hen. You know, a brood, a brood hen is that mama hen that says, don't be messing with me. These are my children. Don't you clean up your own dead gum stuff. Hey, you know how the dishwasher works? Put it in the sink. Hey, whose socks are these? I'm not wearing socks like that. They must be yours. Pick them up. So she's the one that says, everybody do this. She's the one that gets the kids to camp. She's the one that does all this. Trust me. I live with a woman who's able to do all of that. And I... Um, so that's the story right there. So even though you have all this stuff going on, <laughs> some days you just go living with technology. That's what it's like right there. All right. A brood hen, different painting. Yeah. Brood or stewed. There's a big difference. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, thanks for hanging on this morning. Thank you for being a part. Sorry we got off to such a, uh, a, um, rip roaring, slow moving Titanic start there. Uh, so, um, So they'll say, you know, the difference between this show and the Titanic, they had a band. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for being on. Thanks for liking my show. Thanks for hitting those little like buttons. Look, uh, go to uh, my Facebook page. There'll be a thing there, uh, probably above this show or around this show somewhere. Scroll up or down. You'll see a little link, uh, probably a photo of a rooster painting with a banjo. And it says flow desk. If you want to, if you have not subscribed to Roo Doodle's email list, subscribe there in the next day or so. Uh, I'm not painting tomorrow. Uh, the next day or so, you will see a, uh, a, a an email come to you and it'll say, Here's uh, the New Year classes that Rue's going to do, January, February at least. Okay, I'm going to link all those together. I'm going to do eight classes in a row. And so uh, we'll stay with it. It'll be 
simple supplies, painting something old, painting something new, painting something funny, painting some Valentines. That's kind of where we're going to go. We're going to snake our way down that trail. I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. Holiday in the wild if you want to see a herd of elephants. It's uh, it's a good little romantic love story at Christmas. You're, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And, and you're going to you're gonna go, there's the line. Hmm. D- didn't see that one coming. Thank you.